A big change to the way superchargers work was just made today. But an even bigger change is coming to new superchargers this year in the United States and in Europe. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And let's get right into it. Tesla have just made a big change on the app, but there's an even bigger change coming. Tesla just made supercharger visits easier thanks to a new app update, which now displays wait times in real time as well as real time pricing. So you can see the actual time it'll take you if you go to a certain supercharger location for every individual stall. This is pretty cool. Is there a gasoline station or a petrol station as we call them here in Australia? Is there one where you can do that? Right? Not that I'm aware of. Tesla is the country's best selling electric car company in well, many countries and it's not really a close competition. So Tesla has a massive supercharger network and that's one of the key reasons why a lot of people bought a Tesla. They're about to change that by the way and give access to everyone, but anyhow, that's another story. Superchargers in some areas where Tesla vehicles are, are very busy, some they're not. So this is kind of good to know if you're gonna have to wait and then you can say, well, actually, I won't go to that one, I'll go to this one. Tesla recently added the capability for non-Tesla EVs to charge. So this could result in congestion at some locations. Now it's not widespread as of yet. You can't charge your non-Tesla EV at lots of locations. You can charge them in California and New York if the supercharger station has been fitted with magic dock charging that makes it possible for non-Tesla owners to use them. But eventually all of them, all chargers in the US, will be available for use for anyone, for anyone with an electric car. So this brings up a challenge here. Some locations will become very, very busy. Sort of like some McDonald's, quiet as heck. Some McDonald's are super busy. To make things easier, Tesla is giving people the ability to see supercharger wait times in real time, plus the actual price and the number of stalls that are available. Now, I think that's pretty cool. Like You don't have to literally drive all the way there to find out what's going on or to find out what the pricing is to charge there. You can see it on the app before you, from anywhere really actually. But even cooler than this in my view is the fact that new version four superchargers that are being installed now will have 350 kilowatt charging. That's, uh, that's a suggestion to what's gonna happen to Tesla's new EVs. I mean, what would be the point, right? In installing these fast chargers if there are no vehicles that can use them that Tesla actually make. Yeah, pretty clearly Tesla plans on manufacturing its later newer models, maybe the Model Y, Model 3 later this year with 350 kilowatt fast charging. In North America, these stores will get a built-in CCS adapter, meaning a magic dock. Tesla recently introduced new supercharging stores in Europe, V4 versions in Europe. I made a video about this. It was taken down by YouTube. The reason being, the guy, we took a little bit of footage from another video where it said there was free use, you were allowed to use that video footage. The person who um, saw it, he found out and decided to give our channel a copyright strike. So thanks to you, man. Um, and the video was deleted. So anyhow, according to Marco RP and Inside EVs, the latest charges will, within the next, I believe, seven months, or before that time, be capable of 350 kilowatt charging. So these are version four supercharger stalls. And to give you some context, the current superchargers are capable of 250 kilowatt charging. Those are the V3 chargers, so the version three. In addition to that, version four chargers will get a built-in CCS1 adapter, which is a magic dock adapter, which enables all vehicles, any electric car to charge on those new ones. So basically what this means is, if you have a non-Tesla electric car, you can just find any version for Tesla charger and you can definitely use it. Now, Inside EV says that this change is envisioned only for the market where it's necessary to open the network, North America, South Korea, and other places in Europe and in the majority of other markets, aside from China and Japan, Tesla already uses a connector compatible with CCS2. So the introduction of the Magic Dock or V3 in the US and version four superchargers in Europe will combine in the US to offer 350 kilowatt charging. That has some big benefits. It allows other EVs to use the network. Plus 
More power means that charging will be faster for some vehicles. I mean, for example, Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, Porsche Taycan, all of those are meant to be able to charge at 350 kilowatt charging speeds. So pretty big advantage for them because there's not a lot of chargers that they can use right now that are going to give them these charging speeds. Now we have no idea really if Tesla's new vehicles will be able to charge at those speeds, but we do know the Cybertruck should be able to charge at that speed or actually potentially even beyond that. So Tesla is probably getting ready for Cybertruck expansion here. Plus, I think Tesla are also getting ready for doing what I've been saying they plan on doing, which is becoming the largest distributed network of essentially gasoline stations or petrol stations all over the United States, all over the world, actually. They're kind of like the new ExxonMobil, except selling electricity instead of gasoline. And one of the ways they're doing this and plan to actually beat the competition is while their cost of installing these stalls, for one, is far lower than competitors and their charging speed installation costs. Plus, they also are installing something under the ground to enable them to have a much, the ability to sell energy at a much lower price than the competition. You can't really compete with this. It's going to be very, very hard if you're a competitor to compete with this because most competition make a loss right now already. So yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll put a link in the description to my video that talked about Tesla's master plan that they're not talking about, but it is clearly what they're doing to take over this industry. It's worth billions of dollars, by the way. In fact, the industry is worth about $50 billion per year. It's massive. Now, obviously, it's going to take years for Tesla to switch over to V4s or to put magic docks on V2s and V3s. It doesn't really matter. It'll take everyone else years too. The point is, it's happening. I think it's great news. This is the future of the industry. Changes for the better. EVs just, I mean, look at this stuff. They change positively so frequently. Where do you see this kind of news for gasoline-powered vehicles? Oh, we spent $7 billion this year. We got a 2% improvement on efficiency. It took us seven years to develop these new engines. How exciting. Yeah, it's all boring. EVs though, different story. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.